Joker Boxing here. I'm here with Stuart Little, Errol Jarrett, and E-Boxing News. Let's go ahead and get into this fight, Guillermo Rigondeaux versus Joseph King Kong of Beko. Uh, what do you guys think about this one? Let's go ahead and start with Stuart. Are you excited about this fight? Uh, not really, no. I um, don't know a lot about Beko. I've, I, I've seen him, clips of him. He seems to do all the fundamentals okay. You know, He seems to be quite a decent boxer, but it's Guillermo Rigondeaux we're talking about here, you know. It's going to take a really good fight to beat him, and I'm afraid Beko's not that, that guy. Okay, so you see this one being pretty one-sided then? Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, Guillermo Rigondeaux is one of the best fighters in the world, so mm. um, it's going to take a very good fight to beat him, and Beko is definitely not that. Good points. EJ, what do you think, man? Weigh in. No oh, man, it's, I think it's for the for the lower weight division, this is this is as good as it can get. I mean, Joseph, Joseph King Kong of Beko, he was in... Um, in uh, was it was at the bantamweight, the bantamweight super four or whatever, and D'Artagnan was in there. He outpointed D'Artagnan. You know, he already he won his belt. You know, he's a very guy, and you and he arguably he got robbed against um, um, Abner Morris. You know, he he mm. went against there the rematch, but he got robbed, low blows and stuff like that. He should have been in the position to. I remember they were talking about Abner Morris to fight Donny a long time ago. So this fight. You know, obviously Donny Donny lost to um, to Ringendahl. This fight is is, is going to be a very very hard fight for Ringendahl. Um, Abner, um, Joseph Obeko is not the guy to be standing there to be hit. You know, and he hit you back. He hasn't really got the power as Ringendahl, but he's a very awkward guy to fight. You know, and he, he finds a way out. He's a former champion, and now he's got a good resume. It's a very very tough fight. Ringendahl, what people think. You know, resume. Rigondeaux, if Rigondeaux don't bring his eight game, he's gonna be in trouble. But it's gonna be a very close point decision, man. Like I, I can go either way, you know. But I think it's gonna be a really good fight. For the lower divisions, this is as good as you can get, you know. There's no one else in that weight class, though. Obviously, apart from Donaire, that he can fight with give any credibility. So it should be a good fight. And also with Joseph Obeko, he's he's got um, trained by Florian Vecino, which is different as well. So see how how that's gonna weigh in and in, in factor into the fight. Good points, man. Very good points. Uh, E-Boxing News, what do you think, man? Uh, basically, I do not know. Uh, this has got all the markings to be a walkover fight for Guillermo Rigondeaux. Mm. You know, inactivity by Agbeko. You know, he's not fought, He's only fought once since 2011. I don't like that. 33 years old. Took a lot of damage. Well, he's took some damage in his career. Been in a lot more wars than Rigondeaux, obviously. But um, yeah, I think I, and Rigondeaux is coming. Up, is coming here. He's the main event, main attraction. He's gonna have to try and look good. Mm. He's gonna have to try and really look good. So yeah, I, don't, I, I think this will be a good a good fight if you're a big Rigondeaux fan. If you're a neutral or you know you're a blood and guts fighter, nah, probably not. Probably not for you with this one. Okay, so you're saying Kovalev fans need not watch this fight. Isn't yeah, Kovalev and Triple G fans need not apply for this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good stuff, good stuff. Man, I think this is going to be a pretty good fight, but I'm going to lead more towards what Mark had to say about this because, I mean, for me, uh, he's right. I mean, Beko has been pretty inactive, and even though he's been on the world stage, let's, let's not, for me, I don't think we should pretend that this is going to be anything other than a showcase for Rigo. That's what this is meant to be. This is meant to be a fight to get people excited about Rigo again, to get his fan base going, and once again buzzing about a potential Donier fight down the line. So I think that's what this basically is. So Rigo has to have a big performance. Now with that comes, with having a big performance comes taking risk, comes throwing more punches, and those are all the things that could potentially lead to Rigo getting caught with something and having a bad night. You know, you never know. Um, but I think that it all depends on what Rigo shows up. I think the best Rigo now beats the best Joseph Abeko. I think a medium, unprepared Rigo could still edge out a win over Joseph Abeko. I mean, that's what I think the skill difference is here. And it's nothing disrespectful against Joseph Abeko, who is a great fighter in his own right. And when we, we have seen these fun, great performances. But it's just a testament to how good Regan Dow really is. He really is head and shoulders over a lot of guys down there in those weight classes. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and talk about the advantages. Um, you know, what advantages do you give Rigo in this fight? You know, who do you give the power to and the boxing ability to? Stuart, go ahead and get into it. Um, Rigondeaux has every advantage apart from the chin. Mm. Um, I've, Rigo has been rocked. And that's his only, lo you know, it's his only weakness. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He can be knocked out, but obviously it's going to take a very, very top fighter to do that. 
a world class puncher and he's not fighting that guy on Saturday I'm afraid he's, he's an old man and active and he's fighting Guillermo Rigondeaux I mean let's be serious yeah, I mean this this is not even a fight it's going to be just a one sided whooping I'm afraid <laughs> All right, sounds good. Sounds good. EJ, go ahead, weigh in. This is this is the way I see. It, I, I screw with everyone. It's a very competitive fight. Um, the way I see it, Joseph Joseph um, Combeco has got a lot to prove. Yeah, he's in that inactivity. Um, doesn't mean like he's been knocked out. If you look at his career, he's never been knocked out. You're talking about the the the, um, the skill set. Um, there are by even like Joseph Combeco's good skill set. Is that Rigondeau? You know, with his your um his amateur career and this and that. He's, he's up there but the thing is you understand is that if you look on, on, on the resume Ringendahl he hasn't fought as many names like the right name everyone knows who Adam Morris is you definitely know who Victor, Dick Varchinian is you know what I'm saying the name they're about even they're, he fought mm. Adam Morris twice you know he fought Vic when Vic was Vic was good you saw what Vic did to Donair so he, he's up there like I mean um, Joseph Rebecca is a very tricky customer power rise you've got to give that to Rigo Rigo looks like you know he's got the power but boxing skills yeah they're all about even they're all about even they're very tricky chin yeah both of them both of them like like Joseph like a Joseph Guerrero's never been stopped Rico's never been stopped yeah he, he gets knocked down but he comes back so you know that could be even as well but um, you know Rico in all I give Rico right now Rico's got power and like probably a slight edge on the speed but for like that defense and stuff like like Joseph Rebecca's up there it's going to be a very very competitive fight for the 12 rounds it goes yeah Rigo, if Rigo don't turn up with his 8 game boy he, he can get embarrassed nicely Joseph Rebecca can do that to you so um, it's supposed to be a showcase for Rigo and, but Rigo but really, not really because that Joseph Rebecca's very a very awkward, awkward customer and um, you know, he's a former world champion even though he's been inactive he hasn't fought in, in from 2011 to 2013 but um, you know it's going to be a good fight I see I said that his skill set it's about it's not too much in it there's not too much in that interesting man interesting points good points EJ uh, E-Boxing News what do you think man who are you giving the uh, the advantages to in this fight yeah basically most of the advantages go to Rigandau for me but I'll give you a few of the things that Rigandau doesn't have to make it a bit more even and maybe you know get the pom-poms out for like Becco make sure that I was not on his own for a minute so uh, firstly <laughs> Rigandau you know it really depends how he fights in this fight if he tries to hold the centre of the ring or even flirts with holding the centre of the ring again it could be a harder night for him because you know against Maraquin sometimes he tried, he got rocked when he tried to hold the centre of the ring he got dropped by Donay when Donay landed like one punch the whole fight you can't really spin that to be a good thing he lands one punch finger goes down once not 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 very good thing to you know try and spin and who else knocked him down Cordoba is there was a guy called Cordoba who knocked him down I don't know he's been down a couple of times I know I know Mara Queen definitely heard him in that fight but he's been down a few times in his career yeah so th there's that uh, the other thing that I think thinks very interesting is, uh, sorry, Rigandau has non-stop talked about Donair in the build-up to this fight. Mm -hmm. Why isn't he focusing on Agbeko? You know, why are you not focusing on Agbeko? Forget about Donair. Focus on Agbeko. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I can't. You know, oh, the other thing I would say is he can't. He can't tie up a halt on the inside to save his life. Um, very amateurish. Uh, holding and tying up his opponent. But other than that, yeah, you know, Rigondeaux's got everything in the book, and it should be a walkover for him. I agree. I agree, man. I think this fight is is, is potentially interesting. Some of you guys have, have, have maybe woken me up to the fact that this can be a little bit more interesting than we think other than Rigo blowing him out, and I'll tell you why. You know, remember when Timothy Bradley was getting ready to fight Ruzan Provodnikov, okay? Typically, when, when that fight was named, everyone was thinking Bradley was going to walk through Provodnikov, for the most part. A lot of people thought that. But Bradley was at a point where he was taking a lot of criticism. People were calling him a boring fighter, kind of like they're doing to Regan Dow. And what did Bradley come out and do? He came out and did the dumbest thing that he could have did. He decided he was going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ruzan Provodnikov. He was going to try to prove a point. And I mean, to his, to his, you know, to his uh, advantage. I mean, hey, it worked out for him in the long run. He won the fight, and it, it helped him. But it made an easy night's work very difficult. 
very difficult. And if Regan Dow is listening to all of the other voices that are saying he's a boring fighter, uh, we want to see more exciting fights. If he's listening to HBO basically saying, hey, we're going to pull your lifeline if you don't put on an exciting fight, then he could get caught with something and, and it could be very dangerous. You know, it could be a dangerous night for Regan Dow. So I think it all depends on what his mindset is. And, and E-Boxing News also brought up one more point, and that is I haven't heard him say Joseph Obeco's name once, and I've heard him say Nonito Donier's name maybe a million times. Maybe a million times he's brought up Donier's name in the build-up to this fight. And you never want to see somebody looking past their opponent, especially somebody who is as experienced as Joseph Obeco. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into our predictions for this fight. Stuart Little, what do you think? Um... Schooling for eight rounds and then a stoppage. I mean, I just don't see it any other way. I'm not too hyped for the fight. I think it's very one-sided. And um, Rigandau's too good for him. I think Rigandau won't fight like he did against Denair because he lost a lot of fans. Um, he lost a HBO backing, really. I mean, they, they turned on him a bit for it. Bob Barron turned on him. So I think he's got a point to prove, Rigandau. And obviously, he's very talented. So... I think we're going to see a good rigging down, and I think he's going to go to town on this kid. Sounds good, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good points. Uh, EJ, what's your prediction? Um, even though I know Joseph Rebecca and this and that, man, it, you know what I mean? It's, everything's weighing against him. Like, I think, you know what? I think it could be a draw, you know? I think he could out to be a draw. <laughs> yeah, like, seriously, Good I think it could be, like, be a draw. I think it's very, very tricky fight. And like, he got flip. Joseph Beckel, yeah. Like, the reason why I say he's just a very awkward guy to fight, man. He's not there to be hit. Rigo yeah. likes. He, most of the guys Rigo's been fighting, he hasn't fought no one like that. More or less, he's got he's got similar styles. And he's with Floyd Mayweather Senior. Um, sorry, he's with Roger. Roger. Roger Mayweather trainer. I don't know how much they get along um, mm. in training. From what I've seen, Roger's been beating him up to make him move his head a bit more. But, um, you know, if he, if he acclimates to what Roger's teaching him, it'd be very hard to hit, you know? Like, it's it not really going to be the exciting fight, the thing. I mean, but HBO, they couldn't, they needed to get a live opponent and they brought him in. But, you know, we'll see what Rigo can do with it, right? Rigo, in the day, whatever they say about Rigo, Rigo's going to, you know, he brings a thing. But in them lower weight divisions, there's no big name. The biggest name they had was Donair. And Rigo beat that guy. Now, Donair, they don't know what to do, so HBO said all this is to push up. I don't know if Regal's going to change his stuff because the guy doesn't understand English too well anyway. You know what I mean? And the interpreters, whether, what, I don't know what they're telling him. But that's, that's a good point, but he's got to understand money and there's a lot of pressure on the line for him if he wants to make more money. But I have a question for you. Are you really telling us that you honestly believe that Joseph Obeko is going to win six rounds against Guillermo Regendahl? Is that what you're telling us? I'm, t I'm telling you, yeah, that I'm telling you that wouldn't be far-fetched. If you know about both Joseph Obeko if you know about Joseph Rebecca in that weight class, he ain't no bum. He's no one to be walked over. Like like I said to you, he's had the world title title where he's fought the very best and he did beat Abner Morris in the first fight. You know what I mean? He's no one to be you would have known about you'd have known about him, yeah, if Abner if Abner Morris in that whole thing, the referee didn't cheat him. You'd have known his, you'd have known his name. Him and Don him and Donnell would have been a big fight, you'd have known about him. he's no bum. Like yeah, I can see I can I can see. I can see this fight being a draw. I don't see him blowing out. I, Joe, no one, no one's knocked out Joseph Rebecca. I don't think Rigg Riggendale can do that either. I can see the fight being a draw. So, in fact, I'm just going to leave it as that. I can see the fight pulling up the draw. And I'm not really, you know what I mean? It's going to be a very cagey fight. So, I can see the fight going into a draw still. So. Sounds, sounds good, man. No one's knocked him out yet, but uh, there's a first time for everything. So. Yeah, for Rico as well. There's a first time him getting knocked out as well. So, body shots. Joseph Rebecca's got some serious body shots. But, you know, we're seeing it. That's, that's the that's the only chance um, that's the only chance he has. Um, obviously, getting inside and throwing a lucky punch and catching Rigandau off guard. And obviously, if Rigandau don't take him serious, that is his only chance. He's, because he's faster than he's faster than Donia. Yeah, things that happen. So you guys, you make I just think, I just think le the levels are just too far apart for Rigandau <laughs> to lose this. Yeah, see, I, I agree with you, Stuart. But uh, e-boxing news. What do you think, man? Yeah, it's gonna be. It depends. Vigendal has to impress. He not only does he have to impress in terms stylistically, this has to be a commercial success as well. Mm -hmm. There's a lot yeah. of pressure on him. Definitely. Now, the only thing is, you know, he's got a lot given to him on a plate, Vigendal. A lot of people don't like to admit it. He's got a big, good promoter. He's been on a lot of good gun cards, and he's not a commercial success. That's a lot of pressure on the lad. So I can see it going to points. 
I can see him just failing to, you know, knock him out. He needs to knock him out. I don't think he can. So you're going by for Rigo by unanimous decision? Yeah, easy unanimous decision, but he needs to knock him out in order in, in order to well, help his career. I mean, most people say they're fans of his, but you know what Regan Dow should do? Regan Dow should come to the UK because apparently everyone in the UK is a big fan of Regan Dow and wants to buy his tickets. No one in America wants to. I even spoke to a Cuban and he didn't want to buy his tickets. Mm. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> He should come here because apparently everyone wants to buy his tickets over here. That's a good point, man. I, 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 I don't. I don't. But I, personally, I wouldn't spend my money on him. I wouldn't spend uh, 60 quid on him. Cause it just would not be value for money for me. But, right. but um, it's different when you've got to put your money on it. Hmm. Well, yeah, he's going to have some options moving forward, Rigo is, man. Uh, for me, I'm going with Rigo. I'm going to say mid to late stoppage. I'm going to say mid to late stoppage. I think that... The skill level here is just too high, man. I think I think the skill level is way too high. We all saw what he did to Donier. Regan Yao, man, I think he's just um he's just levels above Joseph Abeko at this at this point in time. When Joseph Abeko was being active and when he was having those competitive fights with Abner Mares at that time, this fight would have been a lot more interesting. But you you know, you, you can't just take a long layoff and you know, a huge break and then all of a sudden have a training camp with, with the Mayweathers and then think you're going to be ready to go in there with a guy like Regan Dow. It's just not enough. It's really not enough, man. This is boxing, and um, I, I just think Rigo just has too many advantage in there. S- speed, uh, movement, power, you name it. So I think he's going to be able to do what he wants in there. Um, you know, the only way uh, Abeko is going to be able to really catch Regan Dow is if he isn't taking Abeko seriously. If he has those lapses in fights that he tends to have where maybe he gets a little bit too cocky in there, drops his hand or something like that, or if maybe he's just, you know, so busy trying to be so offensively minded that he gets caught with something. But, I mean, usually that's not really Rigo style. And and I think even with the pressure, he's going to up the tempo a bit, but it's not going to be, you know, Paulie Malignaggi-esque to where he's throwing a million punches, you know. So, at the end of the day, I think he's going to be okay. I think he cruises – uh, through the early rounds and then stops uh, Joseph Abeko late, you know, maybe with some body shots. That's how I see this one going. So uh, does anybody have any further thoughts? I mean, is there anybody that you guys would like to see Rigo fight after this fight, um, providing that he wins? Um, Stewart? Yeah, down the line, I'd like to see uh, Frampton Quig fight him. I mean, whether they can beat Rigo is a different story, but I still think that's a massive fight mm. over over in the UK, and that's that, that that could make Rigo's name. I mean, like it's like uh, Mark said in the UK, Rigo is you know people know who he is. People, some people do like him, and he would sell over here. But if if he fights Frampton or Quig in the UK, that would sell out the stadium definitely. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that's the fight, but that's not going to happen anytime soon because I still think Quig and um, Frampton have got business elsewhere. I still think that um, Quig will fight. Martinez and uh, I think Frampton well I'm not sure who Frampton is going to fight but it definitely won't be rigging down next so yeah that probably a year or two down the line I, I'd like to see that fight well yeah hopefully it happens sooner than later because I mean Rigo I mean I don't know if he's going to have those those couple of years to be able to wait on that kind of fight but yeah if that fight happens I agree with with both of you guys that that would be huge in the UK I think that at this point, you know, he hasn't been a huge success in America. Let's go ahead and explore his options overseas. That would be great. You know, let's see him build up a nice fan base over there. I think they'd be happy to have another champion over there. So I think that's a tremendous idea. Um, EJ, what do you think is next for the winner? Yeah, man, that's a good point. Like Stuart brought up, man, um, the winner, whoever the winner is, I mean, the WBA belt, super, uh, Rigo, Rigo right now is a WBA super, super bandwagon champion. And obviously, Scott Quick has got the same belt. So... You know, that fight is a very possible fight for that to happen. Yeah, for the winner coming over, Joseph Rebecca or or uh, Regal for them to come over and fight in the UK. And then after one of them fight Frampton, one of them fight Quick, sorry, first, and then fight at Frampton after, it'll be really good, you know. You know, that basically just like look to unify, like um, Kiko Martinez, man, like, like any one of them guys could probably beat him, you know, any one of them guys could probably beat him. Just clean up and, and you know, unify the division, you know. Um, I think you know whoever wins the fight is is, is going to go into bigger better things. It, I don't think if, if if I mean it's going to be 
devastating for Rico to lose this fight. Devastating for real. Yeah. Like, because people, people gonna say, oh yeah, you wasn't that good in all hype and this and that, but you know, stars make fights. But for Joseph Becco, it's like, oh man, he's got a payday and he's a former world champion and, and he's, he's got excuses. But Rico, Rico hasn't really got no excuses. He's a fine line. So Rico has to try and win this fight, man. But um, yeah, the winner come to Europe and fight Frampton and thing. Yeah, he got fans in Europe. A lot of people would see him. He used to fight in O2. I'd go see him. I'd pay my money. You know what I mean? I'd pay my money. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd go to the O2. Yeah, I'd, watch, pay, I'd, pay, I'd go to O2 to see him. You know, fight Fr um, Frampton or Quick. That's, you know what I mean? There's not many in that division, them small divisions, there's not many names I know ever. So, I, but I know Joseph Rebecca is because of that, that little tournament. Because I knew Dick Var, Dick, um, Dick Zarchinians first. That's the first guy I knew. Then he, when he lost to Don, 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 um, Donair, then I knew who Donair was. Then I saw, then obviously, and then you saw Adam Marius and I saw their little tournament, then I knew who they were. But other than that, yeah, they, they built them pretty well. So you kind of know a few names in that division. So for Rigo, yeah, come to Europe and fight one of them guys. If you can't get the Donair fight, definitely. That's what I'd like to see. That sounds good, man. Good points, good points. Yeah, I would like to see that as well, man. I think that they should definitely explore that option, man. And uh, I think it would make the Donier fight bigger down the line. You know, go over to the UK, build up your name more, get some real fans going behind you, and then, hey, down the line, uh, maybe eventually Donier will have no choice because the fight will be that much bigger. You know, I think Rigo needs to invest in developing his name more. You know, I, I think he would have served himself, uh, you know, better to have this kind of fight on the Pacquiao Rios undercard, in my opinion. Yeah. I think that would. I think uh, Joker. I think Rigo has to do what the Klitschko's do. Did. I'm um, sorry. Um, the Klitschko's no, they're not going to be popular in America. Americans just don't like their style, and it's, it's, they haven't got the profile for Americans. Americans don't like clean, clean cut image guys. You know that they prefer the loud mouth Broners of the world. So, um, <laughs> what he's so, so he's, he's never going to be a star in America. He obviously don't speak English either, which doesn't help. So then they're never going to take to him. So it would it would be good for him to come over here and fight, say, Quig for a title, Frampton. I mean, I'm not saying uh, Quig and Frampton could beat him, but it'd be a massive event, and it will make a name. It will make Rigandau a bigger name. Mm. I agree. I agree. Good points. Uh, E-boxing news. What do you think, man? What would you like to see from the winner of this fight next? Honestly, looking at it realistically, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I mean. I don't want to see a Donner rematch. I had enough for the first one, you know. No, uh, Frampton, Frampton and Quig, they're not ready. If you want, especially Quig, he's nowhere near ready. You know, it, would it be a huge event? Yeah. But would it be worth, would it be value for money? You paying your ticket, 50 quid? Probably not. Uh, you see, the division's weak. The division is, is weak and devoid of talent. He'll have to move up if he wants to do anything. But he can't, he's too small. Mm. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Well, you bring up some good points, man. That might be a reality that he gets faced with very soon. If he can't if he can't do the smart thing and go overseas or, or find some, some, some guys who are willing to fight him who people want to see. Because I think he's Rigo is in that position where it's kind of like it's it's hard for him because it's sad, but he's not the bill himself. Okay, he's one of these guys who the guy he fights has to be the bill. You know what I mean? Like he he has to fight a guy like Donier. He has to fight a guy who has a big name, and that's what's going to draw people in. Like, okay, wow, Rigo versus Donier by himself. He, he right now he's just not able to 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 draw those kind of crowds by himself. So yeah, I think he's got to either go overseas and build up his own name. Or Mark might have a point. He, it may be time for him to unfortunately have to move up and face some bigger names. So one of those two things are going to happen. But one thing is for sure. First, he's got to go through Joseph King Kong of Beko, And it's going to be a good fight. It's going to be a pretty nice fight. And, of course, it's going to be a great night of boxing. So those are our thoughts on it. I'm Joker Boxing. We had uh, Errol Jarrett. Check him out at Jarrett Boxing. Stuart Little. E-Boxing News. Go ahead and check out all their channels, guys. Leave us some comments and let us know what you think of this fight. Uh, Guillermo Regan versus Joseph Abeco. Leave us some comments. Let us know what you think. Peace.